One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Everybody hear me all right? All right. All right. Uh, we'll go get started. Uh, it is a spring break week uh, for our Escambia County students. I had uh, Caroline was my assistant to the assistant at the office yesterday, you know, so. Um, uh, but a lot of things happening, of course, last week. Uh, the funeral of Lewis Bear and you know we had passed a resolution in council and obviously and talked about last week the impact that, that him and his family have had on our community and certainly showed with the uh, how many people came out um, for all of uh, their services much much deserved and um, so uh, I was grateful to have the opportunity to to attend that last week and and then uh, we had our uh, retired PPD canine uh, Giannis uh, uh, passed away we had announced I know on our social media, um, he was on the force since 2019. I believe I heard it seized to over a quarter million dollars, or you know, uh, 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 actual dollars. Uh, um, and so, obviously, that's a sad day uh, to lose one of our own. Had a district two town hall last week. Uh, that was great with Councilman Bear uh, up uh, over off Ninth uh, Avenue behind Cooksbury United Methodist. Had a great turnout for that and. If you missed, uh, we have that recording on, on our social media. Uh, I believe it's on our Facebook page for you know, make sure you, you catch up on all that, all the different questions that we got. We had a lot of questions, a lot of good conversation. Um, also, we had a ribbon cutting for Sanders Beach uh, last week. That was great. The park is uh, up and running, and uh, every time I've been down there, it's been very busy and, and looks great. So excited to have that going. A couple other things, uh, the Roger Scott Tennis Center improvements, uh, they, those will begin on Monday, March 20th. So um, that, that's obviously something we've been talking about in this community for a long time. Excited to truly get a shovel in the dirt there. So we'll be uh, renovating 12 of the existing hard courts. And then uh, while that construction's going on, 10 of the clay courts and then uh, five of the asphalt, asphalt courts will remain open and then um, all the others will close on March 20 and expect it to be done by fall 2023, obviously weather permitting. Um, you know, we have some rainy summers here, so, uh, so we're shooting for fall of 2023. Uh, we've got a mayor's neighborhood cleanup on March 25th in uh, the northern portion of East Hill. Uh, so uh, I joked on the radio this morning that, you know, we agree and disagree as a community on, on a lot of different things whenever we survey and accept for the mayor's cleanup, everybody it seems to uh, have 90 percent plus approval uh, on that and that is a big help for spring cleaning and uh, throughout the year so march 25th if you're in that northern part of uh, east hill and you can check the map at cityofpensacola.com so um uh, want to just really touch on one uh, note and then we'll take your questions uh the the homicide on Fowl fox street uh, you know, our PPD is continually to obviously the, it's an active investigation. They continue to investigate. I know they are can't really speak to a lot of those details, but uh, that they are making progress. Um, and, and that shooting that occurred Sunday um, at the 2300 block of North Palafox Street. Uh, but we certainly are asking our community to cooperate with any information that they may have. Um, you can call contact uh, Detective Skipper at 850-698-0891. And of course, as always, you can share information anonymously with Crime Stoppers at 850-433-STOP uh, or via the P3 app on any smartphone. So um, obviously, uh, anytime we have something like that happen, um, you know, it affects all of us and, and affects our uh, ability to feel safe and uh, as a citizen, and we know that's the number one thing. So uh, our PPD has been, uh, you know, tirelessly working this. And again, I won't be able to give you a whole lot of details uh, on the investigation itself, but um, we are making progress, and uh, obviously it's our top priority right now. Uh, so we'll continue to uh, update you guys as we learn anything day to day, not just week to week. Uh, but with that, I'll take any questions you got. You would keep it right there for a second. Sure. I, we had someone on one of our shows this morning saying this is just such a problematic location. Maybe it should close. I mean, obviously you're dealing with somebody's private property, mm -hmm. but has the city received complaints about the location? Have you heard similar feedback of maybe the place should be closed and what role, if any, would a city have in something like that? Yeah, uh, uh, that's something that's come across our desk as well. Uh, and 
and there's a lot of the complexities that you just mentioned. You know, obviously it is private property. That being said, um, th this is not a subjective opinion. It's an objective opinion that we've had a lot of issues there. Uh, so um, I've, I've reached out uh, to our PPD to get contact information for the, uh, the property owner. And of course, we're going to, uh, right before I came down here, uh, ask him for some additional data to uh, see, you know, what kind of issues that we've had, make sure we're, you know, we're all talking objectively about you know what those issues are uh, yeah absolutely and I think anytime that we have a, a, a property or um, a, 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 that has a common issue com especially something this serious uh, it's our duty to look at that and, and have conversations with with ownership and uh, you know at the end of the day do what's best for the city so uh, it's too early to say what that is and, and we don't have that data yet we haven't had those conversations so um, I can't speak to what you know the city will or won't do, uh, but it's a concern. I mean, there's no doubt about it. it, it it's a concern that uh, that we know that we are having continual issues at this location, and um, you know it, it certainly deserves inquiry. I'll say that. A completely different topic. Uh, the American Magic. They've got a new boat out there that they're testing. Is there any update on the city's? Uh, Request yeah, um, we've got uh, Erica Grand Cagnolo is working uh, with our port uh, diligently to um, to have our Triumph ask. You know, from when I started to now, really more focused on the Center for Maritime Excellence and that and that partnership with American Magic, uh, and we're making great progress. They're doing an awesome job working collaboratively, both because they're. There is complexity of you know you, it's on port property, um, and there's a lot that goes into uh, trying to get that application ready to go. But uh, I've been part of several meetings about this, and, and we're really moving the ball forward. And uh, you know we, nothing is set in stone yet. Um, I know we kind of have a target of uh, probably sometime in the next 30 days to, for us to be ready to go. Uh, but uh, you know there's still some unknowns there. I couldn't commit that we would be at the April Triumph meeting, but. That you know, I would say that's probably a penciled-in target date at this point. Uh, but there's still enough unknown where you know there could be waiting on some data or something like that for the application that that could trip us up. So I don't want to commit to that yet. But uh, but that's I think what I would say we're penciling in at this point is to try to try to get there in April. Uh, Mayor, on the subject of grants, uh, Wall Street Journal reported this week that uh, travel and leisure is the sector that is leading the economy post-COVID right now. I want to ask about Pensacola International Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you put a grant team together. You look like you've got your foot on the gas, Amtrak, all these other grants. Is there anything you've learned that would enable us to accelerate the upgrading and modernization of the airport? Well, it's a good question. And our big first step was getting that design money. And uh, again, a lot of credit goes to our economic development folks, our Matt and the team at the airport. Um, that was, I would say, walking in here was our number one priority. One of our, uh, we had a few, but one of our top priorities, I would say, uh, just because we knew that the first domino, as I told you guys then, the first domino of any expansion is we got to get it designed. And if we wait another year for design, that's another year we go without a terminal. So uh, I was very grateful for FDOT, Secretary Purdue, Philip Gaynor, and everyone at FDOT working with us and knowing that urgency. And, and look, they get it. We explain, you know, we've got competition coming, you know, in, in other states, <laughs> nearby states, and uh, that this is important to us. So, uh, so that was really the big first step. Obviously, when you start talking about a construction project uh, on the horizon, that's going to be, you know, north of 50, 60 million dollars potentially with five new gates. Um, We've got the demand. That's the exciting part. And so now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, now it'll just be a matter of uh, continuing to work with those partners, continuing to work with FAA, um, FDOT uh, as potential funding sources. But, um, but I would say the first, uh, the, that first jump to getting, really getting the ball rolling is, is happening right now. And we should have an update with, uh, in terms of, of design and, and that design process starting here in the next few months. So uh, we're really excited about that. And not only, you know, really once we had the indication that we would have that design money, our team started working very, very hard to not have there be any lapse, you know, from officially getting that 
you know, once we kind of felt comfortable, uh, you know, our team's been kind of trying to work ahead as much as we can. And so, uh, again, a lot of credit goes to the airport team for getting that done. This uh, Amtrak um, corridor study grant is comes under the federal infrastructure upgrade bill, a recent law. Mm -hmm. would, would any of that infrastructure money apply to the airport, or does FAA own all of that? Yeah, so anything with the FRA, the $66 billion that's coming down through the, the bipartisan infrastructure is all focused on rail, and, and some of it is improvements um, to existing rail. Uh, as you can imagine, the Northeast Corridor certainly leads in terms of activity and infrastructure need, um, but it was in the BIL they pointed out that there were specific they wanted specific dollars earmarked to expand. It wasn't just going to be $66 billion that went to modernize service that already exists. They wanted to ensure that that with that $66 billion, they would see new corridors. And that's how we end up with the corridor ID grant. So, no, there's not really anything that ties to that. But I will tell you, the data point that is interesting to me at Amtrak is for all the success and all the activity, we continue to break records. I believe Matt Coughlin told us that through January and February at least, we're up 18% year over year uh, at the airport. So uh, we're already breaking records from the year before. So that we're, we're doing awesome. But just for perspective, any given year it fluctuates. Uh, but, you know, drive traffic, people coming in by car to Pensacola is about 75% of our tourism. So if you keep that in mind, that we're breaking records when, when the airport, <clears throat> compared to other communities, say like a Fort Myers where it's the opposite, it's about 75% air traffic. That just goes to show you how much volume is coming in here. So when you think about passenger rails, and more specifically where you think about that potential passenger rail going east and west, that hits a lot of our key markets, our top 10 tourist markets. So from New Orleans to Lafayette to Mobile is always, of course, one of our top two or three, just for even if people are day tripping over. Tallahassee starting to emerge. So um, so I think I really look at, at the Amtrak piece as accentuating what where. 75% of our people come in by car, does it make it easier for those people to get in by rail, more convenient, more fun, you know, more of a, a travel experience. So, um, so I, I, if it's really tapping into that that I'm interested to see as this plays out, if um, that, you know, our market can, can uh, sustain that. I just got a note that uh, Chairman Godwin over in Oklahoma County uh, approved they're supporting your letter. Uh, they, That's great. They're meeting this morning and they took that one for you now. No, well, that's yeah, that's great. We've uh, yeah, Erica has been continuing to work that, and we, I know uh, we've gotten a letter of support from Mayor Daly in Tallahassee. Um, I, I saw uh, Mayor Cantrell from New Orleans when I was in Miami last week, and uh, you know, in, in principle, she's, she's I'm happy to support it. We haven't received, you know, we've got to just connect with them, but um, but no, look, I mean, I, I think everybody gets the, the potential value here and the potential opportunity that. That when you're talking about 80 20 money from the federal side 90 10 money and from the federal side it's something you got to look at and uh, this 500,000 kind of like the design for the terminal the equivalent for Amtrak is this 500,000 will allow us to truly do that study and figure out what it costs you know what the viability is and we'll know so much more about Pensacola and its relationship to passenger rail if we receive those dollars and, and we continue to kick it forward Any update on Project Pickle support? Yeah, so we um, we continue to we, we had some some questions on property lines and some things like that. I would say the uh, right now we're just we're batting logistics back and forth. Um, you know, it still continues to be on our radar. Uh, you know, it's not something that that uh, you know isn't a priority for us. Um, but uh, we should have a, a much more substantial update. I would say in the next week or two um, to see. You know, if make sure the terms make sense for both sides, and and I think the any of the property kind of lot line issues that we were discussing, I think we're good there. Um, it's just, you know, just you know, a typical uh, lease negotiation. It's just something that you know, it's property that's going to be leased for uh, what we would believe to be a long time, and certainly the operators would believe to be a long time. We want to be make sure we've got our, you know, eyes dotted and t's crossed. So. Um, so, but it, yeah, it, I know it's, there has been a delay with it, but we're, we continue to push forward and, and at this point, uh, you know, we, are, we continue to remain optimistic about trying to get something done. Mayor, yeah. uh, Parks and Rec, Osceola Golf Course has uh, apparently benefited from the post-COVID, let's all go outdoors and recreate. Yeah. Uh, 
what's your position on Osceola Golf Course? In the past, that's always been a, a one of those things that um, people say accrued to the elite and not to the common person. But the city has always stayed behind it. Do you see a big future for Osceola Golf Course? Uh, well, my position, is, you know, over the years, I mean, this is a conversation that gone back to when I was a sports writer at the News Journal. I probably wrote about this at some point, if I remember correct. And there was a lot of conversation about, hey, you know, here's a golf course and there's a subsidy. Should, and, you know, I always counter with, you know, show me one of our 94 parks that doesn't run on a subsidy. You know, I mean, we every park we have requires grass to be cut, requires, you know, it's part of an amenity of living here. So, um, you know, I, I think if you talk to, to Adrian, our Parks and Rec Director, who knows, who's forgotten more about Osceola than I'll ever know, um, I think if you talk to him, he'd tell you, um, we don't just have, uh, you know, if this isn't just catering to an elite group. They, we have groups of uh, white collar folks, blue collar folks. I, I think it's a true melting pot of our community that goes out and uses uh, Osceola and folks that have been doing it for decades. Um, you know, uh, we have a lot of history there, uh, a lot of uh, positive history in the minority community there. Um, so I really do think that, that Osceola is an asset. I mean, I think running a golf course is always going to be, is it going to be more complicated than, than, you know, mowing and landscaping one of our 94 parks? Sure. Um, you know, it's, there's more moving parts to it and more, more to maintain, a higher level of maintenance. Uh, but look, you know, I, I think just like so many things that we have that, uh, you know, may not operate uh, you know, in, in the black, like, again, I can't think of a park we have that does. Uh, I, I think it does bring a lot of value to, to our Pensacola re residents and our neighboring residents. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter of that and, you know, see, and, and of course, supporter of its future moving forward. Anything else? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And have a happy St. Patrick's Day. I should have said yeah. that. <laughs>